And of course, if you are a big American Horror Story fan, New Orleans is definitely a place for you to be. Hey guys, it's Kate and Z and, and other, other adventures. adventures and we're on an 81 day van life road trip through the USA. Right now we are in New, New Orleans. Orleans! So New Orleans is a place that I've always wanted to go and I'm so happy that we're here because I can finally take that off my bucket list. Welcome to New Orleans, old friend. New Orleans is the most populous city in Louisiana and also described as the most unique city in the whole of America due to its cross cultures and multilingual heritage. People of different nations converged to forge the identity of New Orleans and some of them include the French, Spanish, Cajuns and Creoles. New Orleans traditions are heavily influenced by French culture, especially for its raucous festivals like Mardi Gras, which is French for Fat Tuesday. Mardi Gras is a period of celebration to mark the start of the fasting season of Lent and there will be parties and parades to signify this event. Louisiana was under the Spanish rule from 1763 to 1803 and four decades was a lot of time to spread their influence. Notice how the city's trademark charm is the architecture? The arched passageways, cast iron balconies and colorful cottages. This was all thanks to the Spanish rebuilding effort. The Cajuns are an ethnic group mostly from Acadia with a unique French accent and they make up a significant portion of Louisiana's population. Their influence touches customs, food, and music in New Orleans. For instance, you'd easily find Cajun-influenced dishes like etouffee, gumbo, and jambalaya in any restaurant in the city. Creoles refer to people of mixed racial ancestry. And in Louisiana, Creoles are mainly African, French, Spanish, and Native Americans. All these people and cultures coming together make New Orleans so unique on its own and as a tourist, it's refreshing to witness and experience its diversity. It is the place to be for all of you American Horror Story and The Originals fans. Some of the scenes in the series were shot here in this very city. So maybe this could be a travel destination to the realm of American Supernatural. I really wanted to look for Buckner Mansion, which is the actual location for Miss Roby Show's Academy in the coven season of AHS. Basically a witchcraft school on screen, but in real life, it was just a school for business majors. Sule Business College. The college operated from 1923 to 1983. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Is on the right. Whoa, this is where the witches from the coven live. The actual mansion was built way back in 1856 by Henry Buckner and today, it is a private residence that is available for rental for special occasions. While the mansion is a real location in the series, only the exterior of the mansion is being used during filming. Wow. I don't usually get so excited but like I really really loved- Wow! It stretches! All the way to the back! Oh my god! Okay, I can die happy. And if my spirit lives on New Orleans, then I'm okay with that. Wow, I really love this area. If you visit New Orleans, I highly recommend you to get an Airbnb in the French Quarter. There are certain food places in New Orleans that we wanted to check off and the first on our list is Café du Monde. This cafe is considered a landmark in the city and a hot tourist spot known for their beignets and chicory coffee. Coffee is usually made from the seeds often referred to as coffee cherries. Meanwhile, for chicory coffee, they use the roots of the chicory plant itself to roast, grind and brew your cup. You can enjoy it on its own or mix it with other coffee to complement flavors and Café du Monde offers both. The cafe has been around since 1862 and they're open every single day for 24 hours. All their coffees are traditionally served au lait, meaning it's mixed with half hot coffee and half hot milk. So if you'd like to immerse yourself in the real experience, try this for a change instead of your regular ice black. Remember when I shared with you that the Cajun's influence in Louisiana touches food? Well, beignets were brought into the state by them and they're actually square pieces of fried dough covered in powdered sugar. It's like yu takoi with powdered sugar, but it's amazing. It tastes like Vietnamese coffee. Good. 
but this is the true magic of um, New Orleans. The oldest neighborhood in New Orleans is the French Quarter, a prime destination for both tourists and locals. One of the popular reasons for visiting the Quarter is due to its stunning Creole-style architecture. This is the La Lorie Mansion. And there's a story about that window that has been blocked out. If we're talking ghosts and hauntings in New Orleans, the La Lorie Mansion is a very popular mansion among the locals. Some even insist on calling it the Haunted House instead. Due to the mansion's infamously gory past, it is a common stop on the city's ghost tours. Yep, you heard me right the first time, ghost tours. In the 1800s, the mansion was home to Delphine and Louis LaLaurie. Louis was Delphine's third husband and yet it was still an unhappy marriage and they were always seen arguing. When Louis decided to leave her, it drove her crazy and her slaves became victims of her emotions. She had a particular room where her slaves were locked up, chained, tortured and left to starve for days. A huge fire broke out in the mansion in 1834 and upper parts of the house were destroyed including the room where her gross mistreatment took place. Seven slaves were found and according to the firefighters, the slaves were more or less horribly mutilated. Remember the bricked up window I was talking about? One of the slaves was so scared of Delphine's punishment that he decided to throw himself out of that window. That window is cemented shut and that's how it looks like until today. So the cast of American Horror Story were so freaked out by that house that they refused to film there and they filmed on, I can't remember which which house it is on the street instead. Creepy. Considering Louisiana is one of the oldest states in America and the French Quarter being the oldest neighborhood in New Orleans, it comes with a lot of tales with regards to voodoo and the supernatural. You'll definitely run into some boutique shops selling voodoo dolls and talismans when you're in the area. There is a story about uh, vampires surrounding this church. Now this is the old Ursuline convent, believed to be the starting ground of vampires in town. Tales of vampires have been circulating around New Orleans for hundreds of years. In the 17th century, it was part of the French policy to send young women to their colonies for marriage, and Louisiana was one of them. So a group of young French women were sent down to New Orleans in 1728. They were called the Casket Girls, and each of them carried a small coffin-shaped casket. Until their respective marriages, they were to remain under the care and protection of the Ursuline nuns. So, their new home was the old Ursuline convent on the third floor. Back then, the local men in the French Quarter have little to no respect for women, and most marriages lead to domestic mistreatment. The French king demanded that the girls returned, but the Ursuline nuns discovered no traces of them except their caskets, which were all empty. That was when suspicions grew in town. What were in those caskets? Who were those women? Are they vampires? Did they knowingly transport vampires through the caskets? Or were they feasted on by vampires from the casket? No one knew. But the number of deaths rapidly increased in town since they arrived. Until today, the third floor is sealed and the window shutters are always closed, nailed shut by nails blessed by the Pope. And that was how the notion of vampires in town came about. However, current authorities claim that there is nothing on the third floor besides archival records and other storage items. Hmm. It is actually a thing here in New Orleans to go on a cemetery visit as part of your tourist checklist. You can roam on foot on your own or you can join guided tours so you'll get to know more about their burial practices and the different types of tombs. In the film industry, New Orleans holds first place for a city with the most filmed cemetery. Another American supernatural drama, The Originals, features cemeteries in this city. The series was filmed in Lafayette Cemetery No. 1, which is the most common cemetery picked for shoot locations. But we couldn't visit it. You have to be on a guided tour and we didn't book one. So the one that Z and I went to was St. Vincent de Paul Cemetery number 2. I wonder people take trips to the cemetery when they come to New Orleans. The gravestones and the mausoleums are so beautiful and so, so intricately designed. It's in itself, you know, a work of art. 
These are the most common types of tombs, family tombs. Usually it has two to three chambers stacked upon each other. So when all the chambers are occupied, the oldest corpse will be taken out to be replaced with the new one. Wow, these are the three biggest ones in this cemetery. Wow. Apparently Zeringer was quite a rich family in the 1800s. Very nice. Notice how the tombs have crosses or angels on them? It is a form of symbolism here, and it is customary for families to elect an embellishment to symbolize their remembrance for the dead. There is a play called A Streetcar Named Desire, written by Tennessee Williams. It was named after a real streetcar line in New Orleans, and was called the Desire Line due to the name of its endpoint, Desire Street. Williams used to live in an apartment close to the Desire Line, and would hear the sounds of the streetcar passing. From there, he set the play based on his chosen apartment and his love for the culture in the French Quarter. We got to ride on the streetcar even though it may not be the exact same streetcar in question. The Desire Line has ceased operations and has been replaced with buses in 1948. During the ride, we got to enjoy a really great view of NOLA houses, and I'm not gonna lie, I wish I could call one of these units mine. They're within the range of like 2 mil to 5 mil. For a Singaporean, it's really pretty inexpensive for the size of it. Plus they have a courtyard, and they have three stories. Six bath, 6,000 square feet, pool, outdoor pool. For 3 million, that's incredible. So when I googled best catfish restaurant in New Orleans, this came up. Barrow's Catfish Restaurant. I mean it's in the name, so it has to be great, right? Okay, and the thing we came here for, catfish. So we ordered uh, two catfish platter and we got three. Oh. So we're just gonna have to work on it. Alright then, let's go. I can First. eat this for sure. Okay, okay. Lightly battered, I see. So I'm not really a seafood person, but Kate has told me that catfish doesn't really taste like seafood that much. So let's see how this tastes. So light, so <gasps> fluffy. You know some fish and chips that the batter is super like thick, more thick than the meat. This is not like that. Very light. The fish melts in your mouth because it's catfish, and it doesn't have that fishy flavor. So another thing off the list. Uh, disclaimer: If you're squeamish, please close your eyes at this point. I'll let you know when to open them again. For some unsettling experiences, you might want to consider going to the Museum of Death where you'll see tons of gory and creepy stuff. They have the world's largest collection of serial killer artwork, crime scene photographs, animal skeletons, and the list goes on. Apart from New Orleans, they have another museum in Hollywood and both are entirely unique as they do not feature replicas or duplicates of the same exhibit. We weren't allowed to film in the museum, but I did so discreetly. Not sure if you can tell, but yeah, we couldn't feature most of the stuff. The museum was first established in San Diego in 1995, and its stated goal was to make people happy to be alive. I think if you're not iffy about death and gore, it's very interesting and informative to visit this museum on your trip to New Orleans. Please open your eyes now. It's safe. Now if you're in the French Quarter, you have to visit Bourbon Street. It runs 13 blocks down through the heart of the quarter and is popular for its endless bars and strip clubs. This area is relatively quiet during the day, but it truly comes alive at night and especially during festivals like Mardi Gras. During Mardi Gras, all of these balconies are like where you want to be. You know, everybody down on the street is doing stuff, but on the balcony you get to watch everything and drink and throw beads down. Like these guys. Like these guys. <laughs> Okay, I think I figured that this is the best place to try all the Creole slash Cajun cuisine because everything you want to try in New Orleans comes in appetizer and entree form and you even have side order. There's just everything. So if you come to Gumbo Shop, you will check everything off the list in one spot. Which is very convenient because then you don't have to travel everywhere else to try Creole slash Cajun If you get the bread inside of the sauce, you'll see why everybody loves it. 
Thank you. I'm really curious what the sauce tastes like. It's like a white wine sauce, but not. It's got like parsley, coriander inside. It's very good. It's creamy. It's actually quite cheesy. It has bits of fruit. And the artichoke really, really makes it amazing. Chicken on dilly, right? It's got a kick to it as well. It's a great chicken stew. I don't know how else to describe it. You have to try it. Seafood okra. You can really taste the okra on this one. It is very seafoody. I don't know if Zenas will like it, but it's it's a thing on its own, guys. It's so good. Did you really go to New Orleans if you didn't go on a ghost tour? The tour guide brought us around the city and told us the haunted history of the French Quarter. During the tour, we revisited the La Lorie Mansion where slaves were tortured and mistreated and the old Ursuline Convent where the casket girls were suspected to be vampires. Let's go back to that vampirism thing. Is this a cult? Easy to get in, but it's hard to get out of. <laughs> This is where everybody comes to eat because it's beautiful and the food is good. Check it out. Oh, damn. Turtle soup and the seafood gumbo um, are dishes that you want to eat when you come to New Orleans. Do you want to say something about the portion sizes? Well, certainly not a starter. <laughs> I think this, this is I think a this side is lift. Like, How's the cook on that lamb? It's not medium. Oh. But lamb usually uh, survives even a little bit more cooked. So, the flavor is good, it's just a little bit too well done. So, before I ordered this dish, I asked her if there's real turtle meat inside, and she's like, yeah, but we blend it and mix it in with the tomato base. It smells like a like a beef ragu or a, or a bolognese. Oh, wow. Okay, so I guess they use the turtle meat as a flavor rather than the meat itself inside the soup. And the sherry really goes very well with it. There is a public park near the French Quarter that acts as a tribute to Louis Armstrong, one of New Orleans' best-known jazz musicians. There is also an open space within the park called Congo Square that plays a huge remembrance to the local African-American history. The square is where slaves used to gather on Sundays to socialize and celebrate, singing and dancing to jazz music. This is why Congo Square is still honored today as the birthplace for jazz music and for contributions by African Americans to the music scene. Brass bands started out and became increasingly popular in New Orleans in the 1800s, and members of the bands usually consisted of formerly trained musicians who are familiar with complex scores. Over time, jazz music became a form of expression for community pride in the local African-American society. I think I figured out why New Orleans is filled with spirits. In my interpretation, I think the true spirit of New Orleans really is the music and its people. We often visit places to see new things, eat new food, and here, I was able to feel new emotions, and that is an experience words cannot describe. Experiencing the birthdays of jazz, I've come to appreciate music more than I did yesterday because to some of us, music could just be addictive hooks and relatable lyrics, but here in New Orleans, it represents a community. It was the one thing that made them feel happy and like they belonged through their adversities. And now, jazz music is enjoyed by people from all walks of life. It made me remember the words of Maya Angelou. People will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And for that, I will never forget New Orleans. You have well and truly captured my soul. Drive for five hours! <laughs> so why are you such a big fan?